The body fat that you should aim for will differ depending on whether your goal is to improve health and longevity, for aesthetic purposes, or to maximize athletic performance. Let's now cover what body fat we should be aiming for to achieve each of these outcomes. The first factor to be aware of is biological sex. Males and females have different levels of essential body fat, which is the fat required to sustain essential bodily functions. Males are thought to have lower essential fat requirements, around 2-5%, to whereas females have higher essential fat requirements, likely due to the demands of childbearing and related functions. It is thought to be somewhere around 10-13%. to Therefore, men can naturally sustain a lower absolute level of body fat compared with women while maintaining good health and function. In terms of some general body fat classifications, here is a table which organises body fat percentages into categories for both males and females. First, let's cover what body fat we should target for the purposes of general health and longevity. A good starting point for this topic is this meta-analysis which found a J-shaped relationship between body fat percentage and mortality risk. The lowest mortality risk was seen in those with moderate levels of body fat, around 20-25% to in men and around 30-40% to in women. Those with a very low body fat percentage had a slightly higher mortality risk, while those with a higher body fat had a significantly higher mortality risk. These findings are interesting because we tend to observe better health markers at slightly lower body fat percentages than this analysis would indicate. Higher body fat generally seems to increase our risk of various metabolic and cardiovascular conditions. For example, this paper found that in a sample of around 17,000 adults, there were no cases of metabolic syndrome in those with a body fat percentage of less than 18% in men and 30% in women. And with body fat percentages higher than this, there was clearly a higher prevalence. Furthermore, having too little body fat also seems to be unfavorable for health outcomes. This can include muscle atrophy, decreased bone density, nutrient deficiencies, compromised immune function, and inhibited reproductive functions. For example, this study followed a male bodybuilder going through a contest preparation reaching an extreme level of leanness of around 5% body fat. During their leanest state, many hormonal and biomarkers increased or reduced beyond the normal reference range. Furthermore, this systematic review reported that in female physique athletes dieting down to extreme levels of leanness for a competition, all four cases in the literature experienced some form of disruption to their regular menstrual cycle. So overall for health, low to moderate levels of body fat seem to be associated with the best health outcomes. Having too much body fat seems to be associated with negative health outcomes, and being extremely lean also seems to be unfavorable. As a general guide, a healthy body fat range seems to be somewhere between 10-25% to for males and around 18-35% to for females, which is quite a large range. It is certainly possible to be in a healthy state at levels a little above or below these ranges, but this is a general range that most people would be in good health at. The next factor to discuss is aesthetics. This is a somewhat difficult topic to discuss because what is considered ideal from an aesthetic standpoint is subjective and differs between individuals. In general, lower body fat percentages are going to make muscle mass look more visible and defined, which is generally considered favorable from an aesthetic perspective. This previously mentioned systematic review found that female physique athletes reached an average body fat of 13.1%, with males reaching 5.8%, both of which can be considered extremely lean. However, this level of leanness is simply not realistic or healthy to maintain. Once we go beyond a certain point, it becomes very difficult to maintain such levels of leanness due to physiological pressures to gain fat. This is sometimes referred to as our lower intervention point. This term comes from the dual intervention theory as described in this study. This theory suggests that there is a range at which our biology prefers to exist at. Going above or below this range causes physiological pressures to either gain or lose fat. When body fat gets too low, appetite increases and energy expenditure decreases. And if body fat gets too high, appetite decreases and energy expenditure increases. So at some point, it will just be very difficult to sustain such a body fat without constant hunger, fatigue, and potentially negative health consequences. 
So if we assume leaner is more desirable, but being too lean is not sustainable, then what body fat should we aim for from an aesthetic perspective? Well, in theory, we should be able to maintain a body fat that is just above our lower intervention point. As long as we don't go below this, we should be in a healthy state without significant physiological pushback to gain fat. And while this may be true in theory, it doesn't seem to play out in reality. This is because our diet and exercise habits are largely influenced by our external environment rather than just our pure biological systems. So it is often very difficult to get to and maintain this level of leanness without intentional strategies to do so. And even with intentional effort, it will usually require pretty significant diet restriction and very high activity levels to maintain this body fat, which may not be desirable or practical to continue for long periods of time. So practically speaking, I'd say that you should aim for the leanest state possible that you can feasibly maintain. And this exact level of leanness will differ between individuals based on your specific exercise and diet habits and also your genetic predisposition. Someone who is highly active, naturally has a small appetite, naturally has a high energy expenditure and is very conscious of their diet choices may be able to maintain a lower body fat. Whereas someone who is less active, naturally has a large appetite, naturally has a lower energy expenditure and is less intentional about diet choices may not be able to maintain as low of a body fat. And lastly, let's touch on athletic performance. Body composition can obviously have a large influence on athletic performance. In most sports, having a lower body fat is favorable. This is because body fat doesn't contribute to movement, but it carries extra weight. So having a lower body fat generally improves our power to body weight ratio. This is usually advantageous for sports where moving your body weight is required, such as running based sports, weight class restricted sports, or gymnastics. For example, this study found that NCAA Division I athletes in sports requiring some form of locomotion were all fairly lean. However, when the sport is more concerned with absolute force output, then having a higher body fat can sometimes help. Heavier athletes typically carry more absolute muscle mass, which contributes to force output. Also, simply being heavier may benefit athletes in some contact sports. For example, this may include throwing events in athletics, non-weight class restricted strength sports like heavyweight powerlifting, or certain positions in high contact sports like rugby or American football. For example, this study found that the average body fat among a group of male professional and collegiate sumo wrestlers was about 26%, significantly higher than most high-level athletes in different sports. Furthermore, athletes in different positions in the same sport may benefit from higher or lower body fat levels too. For example, this study found that Division I college American football athletes displayed significant body composition differences between positions. Offensive and defensive linemen had the highest body fat, while running backs, defensive backs, and wide receivers had the lowest. So it is difficult to say what body fat is ideal for athletic performance. Rather, this depends on the sport and the position in that sport. Although for most athletes, moderate to low levels of body fat seem to be best. Let's now summarize what we have discussed. The exact body fat we should aim for will differ depending on our goal. For general health and longevity, a body fat percentage of around 10-25% to for males and around 18-35% to for females seems to be where the best outcomes exist. For aesthetic purposes, this is dependent on what the individual prefers. Assuming that being leaner is preferred, individuals should aim for the lowest body fat they can realistically maintain with their current diet and exercise behaviours. And for athletic performance, this also differs between each sport. In most cases, a low to moderate level of body fat is desirable, but there are sports where a higher body fat may be beneficial. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.